one of the most important courses to complete the study program which will be undergone by University of Gajah Mada or UGM in 2020 while adapting online courses system. Supported by the Ministry of Education, UGM will continue its service within the society across Indonesia during the pandemic issue. Lecturers and researchers at UGM continue carrying out basic and applied research in many realms. For instance, studies in the health sector to cope with COVID-19 are being encouraged and accelerated as a form of UGM's commitment to mitigating disaster using scientific methods. One of the most innovative inventions regarding to mitigating the COVID-19 is GINOS, a screening tool or early detector of patients exposed to COVID-19 which is able to identify the symptom through exhale within 80 seconds. Genos is highly reliable. It has a number of advantages as a COVID-19 fast detection tool. Its sensor is able to detect more than thousands of patients in the long term while providing relatively fast results, non-invasive and affordable. In addition, its uses also applies non-rebreathing masks and disposable HEPA filter. Those challenges somehow direct or even force us to innovate and modify approaches. Success is a journey, which necessitates smart work through learning, studying, and sacrificing. Despite all that, most of all, we love what we do. Universitas Gajah Mada or UGM is a public university renowned as the People's University which strives for and puts forward the interests of the citizens and nation of Indonesia. As a higher education institution that has long been recognized by the society, we are proud of our timeless and tireless dedication to the nation. By cultivating, implementing, and leveraging education, research, and community services which constitute the salient objectives of Indonesian higher education or Tridharma, we remain committed to incessantly promoting the values of Pancasila. We exert the utmost effort to protect Indonesia's sovereignty in accordance with Pancasila ideology and the 1945 constitution. As a world-class university, UGM is devoted to the interests of the nation and humanity. We conduct research, provide education, and deliver community services by enhancing knowledge that benefits the community, the nation, and the world. We have been learning from one another and get stronger together since we believe that knowledge is not useful unless it is shared with others. The learning process will never cease developing. At UGM, we learn by continuously exploring sciences, learning from history, observing the present, and researching for the future. We always work hard and never give up. The learning and research processes at UGM continue to run together and explore state-of-the-art innovations. To create a convenient, environmentally friendly, and pollution-free green campus, UGM has built a wisdom park that substantiates the teaching and learning process. The park per se is open to the public. UGM has also developed drinking water facilities throughout the campus. Provided by a drinking water supporting unit, this system is harnessed by the entire academic community of UGM. 
as the manifestation of its teaching endeavor, UGM operates various field laboratories for educational and research purposes. Furthermore, UGM has established and run a science technopark as an embodiment of its capability of inventing and commercializing a myriad of innovative health products, ranging from medical devices, herbal medicines, and healthy food. There are now more than 118,000 cases in 114 countries and 4,291 people have lost their lives. 2020 has been a tough year for anyone and it is no exception for UGM. Campus activities are abruptly halted, student activities on campus are annulled and everyone is forced to work worship and study from home. Lecturers have no choice but to learn how to teach effectively using the Information and Communication Technology or ICT. Learning and research on technology are strongly supported at UGM and in fact, we have conducted various cutting-edge technological research. Community Service or KKN is one of the most important courses to complete the study program which will be undergone by University of Gajah Mada or UGM in 2020 while adapting online courses system. Supported by the Ministry of Education, UGM will continue its service within the society across Indonesia during the pandemic issue. Lecturers and researchers at UGM continue carrying out basic and applied research in many realms. For instance, studies in the health sector to cope with COVID-19 are being encouraged and accelerated as a form of UGM's commitment to mitigating disaster using scientific methods. One of the most innovative inventions regarding to mitigating the COVID-19 is GINOS, a screening tool or early detector of patients exposed to COVID-19 which is able to identify the symptom through exhale within 80 seconds. GINOS is highly reliable. It has a number of advantages as a COVID-19 fast detection tool. Its sensor is able to detect more than thousands of patients in the long term while providing relatively fast results, non-invasive and affordable. In addition, its uses also applies non-rebreathing mask and disposable HEPA filter. Those challenges somehow direct or even force us to innovate and modify approaches. Success is a journey which necessitates smart work through learning, studying, and sacrificing. Despite all that, most of all, we love what we do. Universitas Gajah Mada or UGM is a public university renowned as the People's University which strives for and puts forward the interests of the citizens and nation of Indonesia. As a higher education institution that has long been recognized by the society, we are proud of our timeless and tireless dedication to the nation. By cultivating, implementing, and leveraging education, research, and community services which constitute the salient objectives of Indonesian higher education or Tridharma, we remain committed to incessantly promoting the values of Pancasila. We exert the utmost effort to protect Indonesia's sovereignty in accordance with Pancasila ideology and the 1945 constitution. As a world-class university, 
UGM is devoted to the interests of the nation and humanity. We conduct research, provide education, and deliver community services by enhancing knowledge that benefits the community, the nation, and the world. We have been learning from one another and get stronger together since we believe that knowledge is not useful unless it is shared with others. The learning process will never cease developing. At UGM, we learn by continuously exploring sciences, learning from history, observing the present, and researching for the future. We always work hard and never give up. The learning and research processes at UGM continue to run together and explore state-of-the-art innovations. To create a convenient, environmentally friendly, and pollution-free green campus, UGM has built a wisdom park that substantiates the teaching and learning process. The park per se is open to the public. UGM has also developed drinking water facilities throughout the campus, provided by drinking water supporting unit. This system is harnessed by the entire academic community of UGM. As the manifestation of its teaching endeavor, UGM operates various field laboratories for educational and research purposes. Furthermore, UGM has established and run a science techno park as an embodiment of its capability of inventing and commercializing a myriad of innovative health products, ranging from medical devices, herbal medicines, and healthy food. There are now more than 118,000 cases in 114 countries and 4,291 people have lost their lives. 2020 has been a tough year for anyone, and it is no exception for UGM. Campus activities are abruptly halted, student activities on campus are annulled, and everyone is forced to work, worship, and study from home. Lecturers have no choice but to learn how to teach effectively using the Information and Communication Technology yeah, or ICT. Learning and research on technology are strongly supported at UGM and in fact, we have conducted various cutting-edge technological research. Community Service or KKN is one of the most important courses to complete the study program which will be undergone by University of Gajah Mada or UGM in 2020 while adapting online courses system. Supported by the Ministry of Education, UGM will continue its service within the society across Indonesia during the pandemic issue. Lecturers and researchers at UGM continue carrying out basic and applied research in many realms. For instance, studies in the health sector to cope with COVID-19 are being encouraged and accelerated as a form of UGM's commitment to mitigating disaster using scientific methods. One of the most innovative inventions regarding to mitigating the COVID-19 is GINOS, a screening tool or early detector of patients exposed to COVID-19 which is able to identify the symptom through exhale within 80 seconds. GINOS is highly reliable. It has a number of advantages as a COVID-19 fast detection tool. Its sensor is able to detect more than thousands of patients in the long term while providing relatively fast results, non-invasive and affordable. In addition, its uses also applies non-rebreathing masks and disposable HEPA filter. Those challenges somehow direct or even force us to innovate and modify approaches. Success is a journey which necessitates smart work through learning, studying, and sacrificing. Despite all that, most of all, we love what we do.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Distinguished guest, Vice Rector for Research and Community Services, Universitas Gajah Mada. Pro Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs of University of Namibia. Invited speakers, honorable guests, and also all participants. Welcome to the webinar Indonesia Africa Center of Universitas Gajah Mada, presented by Agro Technology Innovation Center, Universitas Gajah Mada. This year webinar theme is Good Seed Quality of High Yielding Varieties for Food Security, which is held today on October 7, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, this event is a form of collaboration between Universitas Gajah Mada and University of Namibia in order to promote the achievement of sustainable development goals through education, research, and also community development. Regarding to the theme of this webinar, Participants will be invited to discuss about emerging opportunities in the Namibia sec sector, food security in Namibia, the impact of high-yielding varieties for national food production, and also the role of seed industry on national good seed availability. Ladies and gentlemen, listening National Anthem of Indonesia, Indonesia Raya, and National Anthem of Namibia, Namibia Land of the Brave. Ladies and gentlemen, the event will be officially opened by the Vice Rector for Research and Community Services, Universitas Gajah Mada, 
Dr. Ika Dewi Anna, MKES, PhD. Thank you very much. Very good morning, Namibia, and good afternoon, Indonesia. On behalf of Universitas Gajah Mada, it is a great pleasure for me to welcome you all to a webinar organized by Indonesia Africa Center, a melting pot between the University of Namibia and Universitas Gajah Mada. Our rector was scheduled to deliver opening speech, but he is now on the plane from Jakarta due to sudden invitation by the central government. So I'm sorry, but he sends his best regard to you all. This webinar is the first round held by UGM to follow up the plan to establish Indonesia Africa Center between UGM and the University of Namibia, which was previously discussed at the meeting in 2018. Before we get started, I would like to express my appreciations to the Agrotechnology Innovation Center, which generously helped us to make this webinar happen. The Indonesia Africa Center, initiated by the University of Namibia and Universitas Gajah Mada, aims to work together in various areas and strategic issues related to sustainable development goals. We are sure if both the University of Namibia and Universitas Gajah Mada jointly work together in collaboration with other Indonesian universities and universities in Africa region, we will be able to resolve problems and respond to challenges we face for the future of humankind. The academic collaboration for education, joint research and community services in Indonesia Africa Center is expected to be the twinning platform to nurture students of the world, not only from Indonesia or Africa, to be future leaders in various areas who have strong vision and commitment to humanity and sustainability. The center is also expected to exchange knowledge, resources, and innovations, including students, staff, and network mobility. This webinar is the first in the webinar series from the Twinning Center with the purpose to map and share updates so that we will be able to develop common platforms for education, research, and community services to contribute to society by resolving issues in sustainable development goals. The first webinar is on good seed quality. Even though seed are very small, the seeds are a key factor in plant cultivation. The role of seeds is not only limited to aspect of productivity, but also to food security. In providing food for the nations, this can be achieved through efforts to increase production and productivity of food commodities, where the use of certified quality seeds of a variety plays an important and strategic role. In ensuring the availability of quality seeds of superior varieties, as well as increasing the use of these seeds among farmers, the seed development program must be more focused, integrated, and sustainable from upstream to downstream, considering that the seed production flow in full various agencies to industries. Therefore, a strong seed system is needed to support efforts to increase production and quality of agricultural products. This is one of the important areas that we will work together. For this, we are lucky to have President Director Glenn Pardede of East West Seed Indonesia as one of our speakers, together with R&D Director of East West Seed Indonesia Director Asep Harpenas. ISWESID is our big supporter and strategic collaborator, not only for UGM Gene Bank, but also for scientific development in seed and breeding for Universitas Gajah Mada and for the country. Thank you, President Director Glenn Pardede and Director Asep Harpenas for the time and continued support to us. In this opportunity, 
I also would like to express my gratitude to my colleagues, my friends at the University of Namibia, Vice Chancellor Professor Kenneth Matengu, Pro Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Professor Fred Nord Gideon, Executive Assistant and Advisor to Vice Chancellor, Professor Gilbert Licando, Professor Deyapo Nikanor, the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture, Engineering and Natural Sciences. And also Professor Osmond Wandemela and all the staff of UNAM and student of the UNAM that I could not mention one by one. Also to all keynote speakers, Professor Roda Bireh, Professor Simon Awala, Professor Taryono, and Director Asep Harpenas. I also thank to the representatives of the Indonesian Embassy in Namibia, Dr. Sultan Shahdir, who are present to support this webinar, and all participants for your contribution to webinar. Last but not least, this first webinar from the series is also dedicated to commemorating the retirement of Professor Wanda Miller, who has been being in an endless patience to strengthen friendship and partnership between the University of Namibia and Universitas Gajah Mada. We feel that the University of Namibia is the twin of Universitas Gajah Mada. We do hope that we can start to provide some small but meaningful answers to huge problems and challenges. One of them is by providing seed to support food security for, for the better and sustainable future. I wish you all a very fruitful webinar. And by this, we will open this webinar. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the next session will come in remarks from Vice Chancellor of University of Namibia, Professor Kenneth Matengu. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Director of Ceremonies. Uh, uh, good morning. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Yes, Professor. Professor. Yes, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, Vice Rector Ikadawi Anna. It's a great pleasure to see you again after our meeting uh, in 2019. Um, let me uh, start by acknowledging uh, the rector of the University of Gajamada, uh, Professor Pan Panut Moriano, and indeed yourself, Vice Rector, my colleague, Professor uh, Gideon, uh, uh, the Pro Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Uh, our good friend, Prof. Tariano, the chairperson of the organizing uh, committee, uh, Professor Mondemele on our side, our distinguished webinar keynote speakers. I take this opportunity to observe all the protocols uh, as earlier established by the chair and indeed my previous speaker. Uh, good morning once again. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure this morning to deliver a few welcoming remarks on this very important uh, uh, webinar which marks the beginning uh, of the process of implementation of the potential establishment of the uh, uh, Indonesia Africa Center for Sustainable Development Goals. The, the webinar and, uh, uh, and others in the future, uh, which will help strengthen the collaboration uh, between UNAM uh, academics and UGM academics is one of the key elements in the memorandum of understanding that uh, our two institutions have. The University of Namibia takes uh, the uh, Gajamada University as its strategic partner uh, in carrying out uh, the specific commitments that we have uh, nationally and internationally. Uh, our partnership goes a long way. It started long, long time ago and we have achieved very concrete results that has held um, national importance in all our countries. Uh, so today, uh, the fact that we are now having this webinar on good seed quality of high yielding varieties for food security is a very, very important initiative. As we all know, 
in seeds we have trees and in trees we have forests and in forests we have more seeds. And so the quality of seeds uh, is a very, very important uh, aspect of securing the livelihoods of our, of our communities. Uh, food security touches uh, uh, on six of the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations. And as far as we know, the UN estimates that 10% uh, of the world's population are insecure and face starvation. And the only solution to this is really to ensure that we have good seeds, seeds that um, are drought resistant, seeds that are high yielding, and seeds that consume less water. The situation, uh, at least in Namibia, has worsened in terms of food security due to the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think it is expected uh, that the impacts of climate change may make food insecurity worse. And it's therefore important that we work together to mitigate any adverse effects that may come as a result of us having poor seeds, seeds that may not resist um, uh, pests and seeds that do not give uh, high yields and quality uh, food. Ladies and gentlemen, in Namibia, a food and nutritional insecurity remains one of the major uh, factors limiting socioeconomic progress. Uh, and given that the population is about 60 or more percent rural, it means that the many livelihoods are dependent on agriculture. Uh, and therefore, uh, this particular um, webinar today is crucial in that it will hopefully highlight the major ways in which we can progress together what sort of crops to introduce and where and under what conditions, be they irrigated or rain fed. The agricultural and natural resources sector uh, supports the livelihood of, uh, of around about 70% of the population, but its growth has been stat statistically low, on average contributing about 7.2% of the gross domestic product uh, during the previous decade. It is therefore important that uh, this underperformance of this sector is addressed. And as universities, we have to, to take lead uh, to be at the forefront of this progression to ensure our communities uh, are farming uh, what they need. They are eating what they produce. Uh, uh, we need to be reducing uh, uh, the dependence uh, on seeds that uh, are not organically farmed. Additionally, the effects of climate change variability and uh, other weather events, uh, such as droughts and floods frequently striking our country, always result in low production uh, and food deficits, despite increasing demand for food uh, by the growing population. The food insecurity could also be due to low yielding varieties of our main cereal crops, which are currently being used by our farmers. In fact, the majority of our farmers still use traditional varieties that have low yields, they mature late, they are not resistant to, crop, uh, to, to pests, and hence uh, they become vulnerable to climate variability and change. This problem is largely attributed to the lack of access to improved seeds, that our farmers are left with no option but to resort to the traditional varieties. And we can change this as universities. We know what, what needs to be done, by when, and how. So our task is to make sure that we, um, we use the capabilities and competencies of our academics and deploy them uh, in the communities uh, and assist the farmers to increase this sustainability that we all desire. We at UNAM have wholeheartedly welcomed the initiative to establish the Indonesia Africa Center for Sustainable Development Goals, as we believe that this center uh, is a powerful catalyst for stimulating socioeconomic development uh, in our countries. And it's thus my hope that um, uh, through this, we will extend to a hand together as Africa and work together to ensure that wherever an African lives, they are secure 
uh, and they do not uh, just become uh, beneficiaries of knowledge, but they are participants and they are co-creators of knowledge. It's thus my hope that the Namibian nation and all of Africa will embrace uh, this webinar and the, 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 the results and the agreements that will be achieved through this will lead to a seed improvement program, uh, which we intend to host at our Gongo campus, which is very suitable location for setting up such a program as part of the Indonesia Africa uh, Center for Sustainable Development. We look forward to realizing this vision uh, with the support of our colleagues from UGM, working very closely with their UNAM counterparts and other African partners as per our discussions and mutual agreement uh, during the visit of Prof. Dewa Anna and her delegation in 2019. Let us make this uh, happen. Let us make sure Africa is food secure. Let's make sure that Indonesia is food secure through seeds. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Yeah. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, before we join the plenary session, we would like to ask your permission to turn on the camera for a photo session. Then the committee will capture this moment into three parts. First, on the first slide, are you ready, everyone? One, two, and three. The second slide, one, two, and three. Slide number three, one, two, and three. Last but not least, the fourth slide, one, two, and three. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm. Now, we are going to the plenary session of this webinar today. There are four speakers who will deliver their topics. This session will be led by our moderators, Dr. Panji Sakti Basunanda, SPMP, from Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Gajah Mada. And here is his profile. Panji Sakti completed his bachelor and master in plant breeding from UGM. Then he continued his doctoral degree at Justus Liebig University in Germany. He has 12 experiences of rice in the last past five years. Without further ado, Mr. Panji Sakti, the stage is yours. Thank you, Mas Yopi. Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen distinguished guests, honorable invited speakers, and of course, all dear participants of webinar Indonesia Africa Center of University, Universitas Gajah Mada. The theme of our today's webinar is good seed quality of high yielding varieties for food security, which is presented by Pusat Inovasi Agrotechnology, or in English, Agrotechnology Innovation Center Universitas Gajah Mada. And this serves as the first part of a series of nine talks on sustainable development exchange experience by Indonesia Africa Center for Sustainable Development Goals of UGM, or in short, Indo-Africa Center UGM. The series is styled Web Indo-Africa Center and will be held every month on each Thursday, the first week. Thus, for the interested ones, please stay tuned for the forthcoming talks, which will cover aspects of security, trade and development, and community empowerment. Now, let me introduce our four speakers today. Our first, our first speaker is Professor Dr. Roda Yirop Yirech, from University of Namibia. Pardon me of misspelling, uh, Professor. Professor Birech today will give talks on emerging opportunities in the Namibian seed sector, a food security strategy. strategy. The next presenter will be Dr. Simon Kamwile Awala, also from University of Namibia. 
He will give speech on food security in Namibia, status of crop production, challenges, and initiatives. Next, we have Dr. Taryono from Agrotechnology Innovation Center or PIAT UGM. Dr. Taryono is the head of the institution and he will share his knowledge and experience on the impact of high yielding varieties for national food production. Our last presenter will be Insinyur Asep Harpenas from PT East West Seed Indonesia or Evindo. Mr. Harpenas will present us on the role of seed industry on national good seed availability. With his long experience struggling up and down in his seed company, indeed, it will be interesting to us in hearing his talk. Each speaker will have talk for 20 minutes. And after that, there will be discussion. There will be discussion session for 50 minutes where participants may join for comments and questions. Please write your comments and, or, and or questions, which is limited to two points per person in the chat section. And please write also to whom they are addressed. Okay, well, it's about time for us to hear the talks of our speakers. Please, Professor Birech, to prepare for your presentation and talk. And while we wait for the preparation, let me introduce our first speaker. Professor Birech currently is Associate Professor in the School of Agriculture and Fisheries Sciences, or SOAF, Faculty of Agriculture, Agriculture Engineering and Natural Sciences in University of Namibia, or UNAM. She holds her Doctor of Natural Science, or Doctor Rerum Naturalium, in Sustainable Agriculture from University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences, or popularly, popularly known as BOKU in Vienna, Austria in 2008. And Master of Philosophy in Seed Science and Technology from Moyu University, Kenya. She has many activities covering vast area of disciplines. She is currently leading the evaluation of different varieties of number of high yielding crop plants in Namibia to provide certified, certified seed sector. She is also coordinating researches on climate smart agriculture in Northern Namibia, including adoption of digital technologies in farming. Today, Professor Birech will give talks on emerging opportunities in the Namibian seed sector a food security strategy. Okay, since the, present, since the presentation are prepared, uh, please, Professor Biraj, the time is yours for 20 minutes, please. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear clearly. Yes, very clearly. Okay, I would like to share my my presentation and the host has disabled the screen sharing. Please enable screen sharing. Please, could you enable screen, screen sharing so that I can share my presentation? Yeah, yeah. Oh, now we can see, uh, Professor, yes. the presentation. Okay, please continue. Okay, as has been introduced, my name is Professor Roda Biret, University of Namibia. Uh, the map on the top left is the map of Namibia, and on the top right is the logo of University of Namibia. Namibia is in the Southern African region, and in particular on the Southwestern region. So my presentation is in Emerging Technologies in Namibian Seed Sector, a food security strategy. Welcome. Moment. Oh, 
Oh yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Sorry for that hiccup. As an introduction to agriculture in Namibia, in Namibia and in Africa in general, 70% of the African population depend on agriculture. And it contributes to 14% of the GDP in Sub-Saharan Africa, where 60% of the workforce are employed by agriculture. In Namibia, agriculture contributes to 5% of the GDP, which may look small, but it employs one out of five of the total workforce and 70% of the entire population of Namibians depend I'm so directly- sorry, Professor, indirectly. sir. I'm sorry for sorry? interrupt your presentation. Uh, we cannot see your video clearly. You cannot hear me. Uh, sorry, uh, we cannot see your camera clearly. Just a uh, white one. Maybe you can uh, turn off the virtual background first. Is it okay? Okay, how about now? No, maybe we turn off the lights. Yes. Actually, maybe we turn off the lights. Yes. Uh, actually, you can, uh, you, can, you can turn off the virtual background. I do what? You can turn off the virtual background. For the background? Yes. Currently, we are using the, the natural background in the, in the room that we have. Yes, I think that's now better than before. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank Sorry you. for the for the interruption, Professor. Okay, it's okay. So I was introducing uh, agriculture in Africa it, and Namibia. Its role in uh, GDP, economic development, food security, and livelihood. However, Namibia is one of the driest countries in Africa. It's the second driest in Africa, actually. And uh, it has two deserts, Kalahari Desert and Namib Desert. That tells you the rainfall is not enough. And therefore, one critical challenge of uh, food production is insufficient rainfall and therefore drought stress. And droughts occur regularly. And also the soil is poor and there is a, some high extent of land degradation. Farmers have limited access to certified seed of high quality adapted varieties of food security crops. There is also limited access to market of produce, high cost of inputs, low technology know-how. And uh, all that shows us that Namibia is depending is producing only about 60% of its food and imports the rest. Cereals, for example, annually Namibia needs 200 million tons, but we only produce, we only produce 600,000 tons and import 68% of palm millet, that is the main food security crop, 61% of maize, and more than 90% of wheat. That is, for example, in 2020, Namibia imported 115,000 tons of wheat, 20 tons of potatoes, mainly from South Africa and other countries. So where are we in food security? Food security, we are now almost 50% depending on uh, external farmers who are not within the borders of this country. And uh, to handle or to tackle the problem of food security, it has to start with the right seed. You have to improve the seed production system. Have it certified, test the varieties locally, get the adapted ones, and be able to distribute to the farmers. Of course, other interventions should be access to water irrigation, access to credit, and uh, access to inputs such as fertilizers and minerals. So that is why seed, uh, the seed sector is number one and the first intervention should enter into food security as a strategy. Yeah. Now, 
I'll give you a brief of the Namibia certified seed sector. Seed certification is entirely under the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform, where breeder seed, foundation seed, and basic seed and certified seed are overseen by the ministry of, by the same ministry that I've mentioned. And the ministry is able to produce at its own farm, for example, or my NNR research station, uh, breeders, foundation, or basic and basic seed of pearl millet, open pollinated maize variety, and beans. And even those seeds are not enough for all the farms. And after the ministry produces basic seed, it gives to the co farmers cooperatives to multiply the seed and then to package and get it to the sector. This seed is less than 50% of what that the country needs, it's not enough. So as we are talking, uh, there is a deficit of 60% of the seed in this country. And almost all the large scale farms are importing seed from neighboring countries, mostly Zambia, South Africa. And this tells you that uh, there has to be a lot of intervention right from the ministry level institutional support, infrastructural support, up to the level of breeders, strengthening capacity of breed, plant breeders, seed processing, seed packaging, seed distribution. Good enough, Namibia enacted a Seed and Seed Paradise Act in 2018, and also the country is a member of International Union of uh, Protection of New Variety Plants as well as Africa Regional Intellectual Property Organization. However, its seed laboratories are not accredited by any international seed organization like this. So the country is emerging in its seed regulations at this time. It has not been really in the game of uh, extensive certified seed production only until the last two years. So the ministry is currently drafting guidelines for the production of certified seed, is developing guidelines for seed quality assurance, for both field inspection and laboratory seed testing. It is developing procedures for germination tests, purity tests, plant figure, plant health, as well as guidelines for seed storage, seed distribution, transportation and marketing and labeling. So this particular law, as a seed council, okay, uh, and acts or gives the power to the seed council to be able to register new varieties, to be able to register seed producers, and to be able to regulate the entire process of seed inspection up to packaging, even up to plant breeders' rights. So that is where Namibia is at the moment. And uh, we foresee a, certified, a strong certified seed sector, as you can see in the table, uh, in that graph. And it should be able to have its own varieties, produce its own seed, regulate its uh, quality, multiply, be able to reach the market, process its own seed, package its own seed, store it, test it, and distribute to the farmers at a reasonable price on time with proper labels and be able to control even after sale services. That should be what we are expecting. Okay, at, Nash, at African level, Namibia has received a lot of support. For example, African Development Bank believes that Africa should move to the, in its uh, 10 year strategic plan, that is ending in 2022, African Development Bank wants to reach 74 million African population with agricultural technology. One of them is seed. Seed is the biggest intervention that is being foreseen by the African Development Bank. It's not only African Development Bank. There are many other programs at high level, even African Union that are targeting seed as a very, very important area of intervention. One project I'm going to mention is NAMSIP project funded by African Development Bank that is now currently developing 
uh, seed systems, production, processing, quality assurance, and the entire certification, but targeting food security crops, that's maize, palm, millet, sorghum, and vegetables. And the main intention is to increase food security, reduce food imports, uh, increase food pro uh, crop production, reduce food imports, increase household income, increase household food security, and job creation, and uh, improve the lives of the rural people in general. Now, this brings me to the next slide of what University of Namibia is doing. University of Namibia came together with Namibia Agronomic Board with the intention to also intervene in the seed sector, being the largest university in the country and with a strong faculty of agriculture, seed is a priority to University of Namibia and its partners. And uh, we entered an MOU in June 2020 to develop adapted varieties, food security, to develop adapted varieties of food security crops. And we agreed in the agreement we signed to do it in two phases, initially to do seed research, that is to identify high yielding varieties. And secondly, once we identify high yielding varieties, we go into seed multiplication. That is field production processing, certification labeling and distribution with a fund of $1 million Namibian dollars annually for the next five years. Now, uh, I'll go straight to what we are producing. For the last uh, one year, we have tested 60 hybrids of maize from Simit, 25 hybrids of pearl millet, 50 hybrids of uh, bread wheat, six varieties of potatoes. These are the food security crops that we consider very critical. And we have already from our preliminary, uh, we are in a phase two in most of these studies. I mean, it's a second trial. And in some of them, we are in the first trial. The results are coming out positively, as you can see. The next slide. Yeah, okay, those are, that is palm millet. This is the main food security crop in Namibia. And we tested these uh, 25 new hybrid uh, varieties in four sites. And these are the different sites and the results we are getting are very, very encouraging. Okay, you can see from this, uh, from one of the sites, you can see the yield of the 25 varieties. And the highest yielding could go, has gone up to close to seven tons per hectare, while the local, the best of the local varieties was giving us up to four tons per hectare under research conditions. That tells you, if you bring in new varieties and you scan them through in the local environment under the current soil conditions, under the current temperature, under the current rainfall, you are likely to pump or to really get good varieties that are high yielding for food security in this country. That is what this table, this graph tells us. We do the same for maize in four sites. And we were able to find some up to 10 hybrids of maize which are better than the local varieties as seen in the next slide. What is planted locally is in red, and some of our local lines which are planted by large scale farms are doing poor, while the new ones are doing quite, quite well. So we are moving to stage two of multiplication so that we do the selection and hopefully now expand the production into large scale production. For wheat, we got 49 varieties from Simit. We tried them in the field. Actually, they are at the stage of head. Uh, they are at a grain filling as we are talking now. Okay, these are the varieties replicated in two, planted in five sites and replicated in two, two times. And uh, already, 
we are going to be getting our results in the next one. Okay, the, the laptop is a little bit slow, I'm so sorry. Now, uh, we also evaluated six elite varieties from France, and uh, this is our research going on at Ogongo campus where I am at the moment. And we are trying six varieties during this winter season, Namibia as winter and summer, and uh, we are going to be harvesting tomorrow, the second season. We are getting promising varieties which are better than the local ones. Okay, that the slides which I've just passed, I've explained what we've been doing. And I'll just use the next few slides to explain what I am convinced is the next innovation going forward. That is emerging opportunities. I have written three possible opportunities. One, one is conventional seed production, seed identification, evaluation, and production distribution, like what I presented before. Number two, we can do micropropagation of prophetic and basic seed of uh, vegetatively propagated crops like potatoes, dead palm and crepes. That's very, very possible. Another third innov innovation is to develop a seed hub that integrates seed research, training, seed business, and advisory on the, uh, for the sake of the farming population in this country. I'll quickly just go through those slides. Micropropagation. University of Namibia as a, a tissue culture laboratory, which would quickly help to grow the potato seed industry faster than could happen in the conventional system. And you would start with the selection of the right tubers, you do in vitro plant uh, simula simulation of germination from the merry stems, you select, you pick from the merry stem, you do mini tuber production, and then you go into greenhouse production, field production. You can even select farmers who can be able to expand at the later stages. And finally, you are able to package the seed and sell to farmers. The advantage of this method is that you, it is faster, 40 times faster than the normal seed production, which is conventional. At the same time, the potatoes will be disease free, virus free, it should be, and you will get two through to type varieties and be able to quickly get the qualities of the new variety reaching farmers within a few years. Excuse me, Professor Birech, you have only three minutes left. Please okay. um, fasten your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, the laptop is just not moving sometimes. Okay. That shows uh, the potato diseases that usually emerge when you do, when you pro continue producing from the same tubers for a long time. Just continue. The slides are not moving. Let me just conclude from what I had prepared from down there. Okay, as a conclusion, I foresee a situation where University of Namibia and its partners will do seed production in two ways. One, is grain seed production using conventional methods after identifying the best varieties. And two is micropropagation, which accelerates seed multiplication of vegetatively propagated crops like potatoes, dates, and grapes. The slides which followed, which uh, we haven't been able to see, were showing the possibilities that exist even in the crepe industry and in the, in, in the date farm industry. And finally, University of Namibia will have an innovative hub 
that is called a seed unit, which should be able to link research where varieties are produced and to link research with training of students and farmers and to link the same with to link the same with the farmer extension because farmers need a lot of know-how. So this particular institution or hub should be able to propagate important information that should be able to reach the farmers. And it should be able to also develop business models that farmers can take, even if it's a small scale farmer, medium farmer or large scale farmer in the area of seed production, both in food security crops and export crops. So I invite the university which we are partnering with at the moment in Indonesia to work with together with the University of Namibia in the interest of growing the seed sector in Namibia in many different dimensions and innovations. And Namibia would also wish to engage in the same for the success of the food security sector in Indonesia. Thank you very much for listening and for participating in my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Berech, for your speech. Uh, please, please uh, give uh, I please give uh, for participation participate particip participants to give your best applause. Thank you. Next speaker is Dr. Simon Kamwele Awala. Would you please, Dr. Awala, prepare your presentation and speech? Dr. Awala currently is a lecturer of agronomy and seed science and technology in the Department of Crop Production and Agricultural Technologies, School of Agriculture and Fisheries Science, or SWAF, Faculty of Agriculture, Engineering, and Natural Sciences, University of Namibia, or UNAM. He got his PhD in Agricultural Science in Agronomy in 2017 from Kindai University, Japan, and received a prize as the best student in PhD activities in the Graduate School of Agriculture. His Master of Science in Agricultural Sciences, uh, majoring in plant physiology, was obtained in 2008 at Nagoya University, Japan. Dr. Awala serves as manager of UNAM Rice and Manghangu, or Millet Research Project, and recently led the development of the SOAF research group proposal on rice value chain. He previously worked as senior researchers in the Ministry of Agriculture of the country, leading the National Sorghum and Permillet Research Program and National Post Harvest Program. He is active also as the co-founder and deputy editor of the Wellwitzia International Journal of Agricultural Sciences, or WIJS, IJAS. Uh, is the presentation already prepared? Sorry. Uh, there is a question from the um, uh, committee, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Awala. Uh, will you be the one who present or from our side? Uh, I would like to, pre to present from my side. Okay, okay. So you will present by yourself. Okay, then um, the time is yours. It's your time for 20 minutes. You have time. Please, Dr. Awala. Can, can you see my presentation? Yes, I see. Yes. Yes, we can see clearly and hear, hear you free, uh, clearly also. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, uh, maybe just put it on slideshow. Slideshow. Mm. There you go, thanks. Okay, yes. that's good. Thank you. Uh, my name is Simon Awala. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Crop Production and Agricultural Technologies in the University of Namibia. 
Uh, today I'm going to talk about food security in Namibia, status of crop production, challenges, and uh, initiatives. Uh, uh, this map shows uh, the uh, position of Namibia in Southern Africa, in Southern Africa, map of Southern Africa, and the Indonesia is far across the ocean, as you can see here. So the the uh, total land area of Namibia is uh, 800 and the, uh, it's more than 800,000 square kilometer. The, as you can see here, the country is classified as semi-arid uh, uh, country in terms of climate. And the total population is 2.5 million. So Namibia just attained its political independence in 1990, so whatever we are doing, we use 1990 as benchmark. So in terms of uh, GDP and the sectoral contribution to the GDP, so uh, the average GDP between uh, 2008 and, the, and the 2017 is uh, 10.8 billion US dollars. So this pie chart shows the sectoral contribution to GDP. Um, as we can see, uh, services, uh, which includes wholesale, uh, transportation and communication, finance, uh, financial interme intermediation, so contributes 60-60%. So it is the, the huge contributor to the GDP. Uh, agriculture, as you can see, it contributes only 4%, despite it is uh, significance in the livelihoods of the people. Uh, we know that water is the basic input, uh, second to seed, maybe second to seed, uh, to agriculture. So this uh, uh, Despite Namibia, Namibia being dry, uh, it has some perennial rivers um, around the country. But these perennial rivers are just on the borders. As you can see here, we have Kunene, Kuvelai, and Kavango River, Zambezi River, uh, that are just on the borders, borderline between uh, Namibia and the neighboring countries, Angola and Zambia. And in the southern part of Namibia, there is Orange River. Although the map shows that Orange River has gone into inside Namibia, uh, that is not to, no longer the case. So it is just again and on the border line between South Africa, between Namibia and South Africa here. So we, what we see. Uh, has been changed because of uh, due to land formation. Uh, so, although, uh, so th this means that in Namibia it is a dry country. So the surface uh, water do not help much. Uh, in terms of rainfall, uh, this map shows the amount of rainfall in Southern Africa. So Namibia, range, Namibia, the rainfall in Namibia ranges between 200 to 600 millimeter per year, as it can be shown in the map. And the most of this rainfall, as it is indicated by the blue, the blue, the light or much blue color, so it's received in the northern areas of the country. Uh, here I have just selected the northern area, which consists of, uh, of, of eight administrative regions. And this uh, area is home to more than 60% of the Namibian population. It's a small area compared to the to, to, to the uh, whole country, but most of the population, population resides in this region here. 
And the majority of the people are small scale farmers who uh, produce crops. Um, this, uh, the, this graph shows the rainfall across the northern area. Uh, the all in all these graphs, they are from four stations, from northeast to northwest. So the Katima station, Katima station is in northeast, and the, this is the one that receives the northeast, east, eastern Namibia receives most of the rainfall compared to the rest of the country. And the, uh, as we can see, there is an increasing trend in, in terms of uh, total annual rainfall. However, again, in all the stations, they showed that there are higher fluctuations. Uh, in yearly, uh, there is higher yearly uh, uh, fluctuation in rainfall. Uh, given such a rainfall situation uh, and also the water situation, so uh, crop production in Namibia, especially in the northern region, is rain fed based. And uh, these are the crops that are commonly grown in the region and also in the country. So, pear millet is the major uh, crop. For Namibia and is the staple crop, uh, followed by maize, sorghum, cowpea, and uh, this uh, bambara groundnut and the uh, cucumbits. These are smaller crop, but they are always uh, part of the farming system. Well, uh, although there are so, we have uh, several crops. These are the major cereals that are consumed in Namibia. And the pear millet itself is, is the, it is locally produced. Maize is a combination of local production and import. Wheat, again, local production and import. Now we are going to see the average cereal grain production and import. Uh, this is over about 30 years from 1990 to 2017. So this uh, pie chart shows that uh, the country only produce 40% of cereals that is consumed in Namibia and 59% uh, is important. 59% is important. Uh, this speaks to the food security issues. And so this uh, line graph shows the fluctuations in production uh, per year. So as it can be seen from this graph, uh, the red or the orange line is dominated, it occupies the topmost part of the, the chart. So that means in, mo, in almost, you know, in most of the years, uh, we import more than what we produce. Yeah, the, this table shows the, the proportion per crop. So per millet, uh, that the local for local production per millet contributes uh, 51%, while maize contributes 40%, and wheat uh, contributes 9% to, 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 to the production, local production. In terms of import, yeah, there is no significant figure in terms of per millet production. However, maize and wheat, uh, yeah, they dominate 
import import the, the imports of grains. Uh, for horticultural crops, uh, it's, it's a kind of vice versa. Uh, this is probably because uh, they are not uh, a food security crop as such, uh, whereby uh, local production is uh, 62% while import of horticultural uh, crops is uh, 38 percent. These uh, these two pie charts shows production and import by crops. Uh, if we look at the production, so we can see that yes, there is a, a high proportion from a combination of horticultural crops, which is. Uh, which is 47%, but there is an interesting part that 28% uh, of production is potato. Yeah. Potato. And uh, onion, followed by onion, which is 16%. So in terms of import, uh, again, potato, in terms of single crops, potato, Although it is produced in some large amounts, it is still, uh, most of it is still imported. And uh, followed by apple, bananas, and onions. Uh, these are the major challenges to crop production in Namibia. As you can see here, most of the challenges are attributed to to humans and followed by abiotic environmental uh, issues and the biotic uh, living uh, organisms. So we here improve the seeds, lack of soil fertilization, low plant density, lack of agricultural mechanization. So these are some of the crucial, uh, crucial uh, factors. So they are not ranked in, in any uh, important uh, orders of importance. So in terms of about it, drought, flood, uh, delayed short rainy seasons, infertile sandy soils, those are also the, some of the major factors um, uh, hindering crop production. Uh, we have seen the fluctuation, the, the fluctuation in the rainfall, but the rainfall is not uh, stable. So production can fail either due to flood or due to um, drought. Uh, weed competition is also a major problem and so insects, beds. Uh, this uh, picture shows a typical setting of uh, homestead, homesteads in Northern uh, Namibia. Uh, uh, looking at these pictures, the, yeah, it was taken during the dry season, but this ecosystem can be flooded uh, when there are higher rainfall, in years of higher rainfall. So uh, a picture on our left here shows the effect of drought and sandy soil on, on crops. The, the crops were killed and there was no harvest. And this is the, uh, the picture in the middle is drought, and the other one is, is flood. So this all happened in northern Namibia. We are coming to initiatives that have been taken to to improve food security in the country. Uh, First of all, let me talk about government agencies and programs. So in response to the food insecurity in the country, the government has established uh, uh, some agencies to respond to the food shortage issue. So we have Agricultural Business Development Agency, which is uh, responsible for managing uh, uh, green schemes. Uh, uh, irrigation, uh, green scheme irrigation projects in the country. So we have 11 green scheme projects that are under that agency. Uh, 
which uh, consists uh, of seven seven thousand five hundred uh, hectares of, of land area, but only forty eight percent, fifty eight percent of that is actually under uh, is, is being used for production. So the rest is still to be developed or is underutilized. So, but these green schemes, uh, they are also they also have their own challenges, like what I presented there. Uh, mechanization is, is a problem. So we rely on, on, on specialists when it comes to operation, operation of uh, center pivot, for example, or we rely on uh, specialists from outside Namibia. Uh, there is another agency is the agro-marketing trade agency. So this is uh, another wing that is responsible for marketing. The other one is, is for production. So this one is for marketing of uh, both uh, agronomic and uh, products. Uh, the government has uh, a dry land crop production that assists uh, uh, mostly small scale and medium scale farmers uh, with uh, uh, some services, for example, uh, some inputs and services. Inputs for, for example, fertilizer, seed, and pesticide, and services, plant services, uh, planting services, and wheat services. So the government has also uh, initiated recently another project, the Namibia Agricultural Mechanization and Seed System Improvement Project. So this one strive to increase access to higher quality seeds and also to promote the mechanization in the production. Dr. Awala, you have five minutes left. Thank you. Yeah. Um, in terms of policies, like what Prof. Rodda presented, uh, there is a, a seed policy, a seed and seed variety act, and the green scheme policy. Uh, research output, uh, there are three per millet varieties that have been released, uh, two sorghum varieties, eight cowpeas, uh, five of which are mutant varieties, and one bambarana. Of, of, of course, uh, maize, there is one that, uh, uh, but it is production, it's not, seed multiplication is not, uh, really uh, up to uh, standard. Uh, there is also a cooper some cooperatives that are responsible for the multiplication of such varieties. So the, the, these are three cooperatives, but only one of those three that, are, that is fully functional. So the other two um, are not yet capacitated to operate fully. Uh, these are uh, some partners that work with the government in strife for food security. So, for example, we have Crave Project, we have International Atomic Energy Agency, and we have GIZ. Uh, for UNAM and the collaborating partners, uh, UNAM is working, has been collaborating with the Japanese government in the Japanese university in the rice project, uh, which strives to, to, for crop diversification, because uh, most of the, or almost all the crops that are grown or cultivated locally are dryland crops. So when there are floods, then these crops uh, uh, tend to fail and there are no options. So because of that, rice uh, is viewed as a, a, an alternative for flood. A Maubrid project, uh, this is focusing on orphan crops, uh, which includes Bambara groundnut and the Cleomega inandra. And um, 
this uh, UNAM in Namibia Agronomic Board Seed Project. This is what Prof. Roda just presented about. And there are also uh, research on individual crops like Kalahari seed melon and cooking melon. And these are also often crops that could be developed for commercialization and for enhanced food security. Um, UNAM also uh, has a response to, to food insecurity. Uh, currently, it, is, it offers, uh, the Department of Crop Science offers a diploma in agriculture and the BSc, uh, BSc agriculture honors in crop science. So, but uh, this year, since last year and this year, we have been working on curriculum transformation and the, the current programs have been transformed as follows. Uh, a diploma in sustainable crop production and uh, technologies, a BSc in crop production, BSc in agronomy, agronomy honors. This is the one year, this is, it follows the, the three year program and the BAC in horticulture honors and BAC in crop improvement and seed system. So this is, a, this is an effort to respond to improved or to improve crop production in the country. So these are some of the results from the rice projects. Um, in most cases, the rainy season is short. So here we have uh, evaluated short duration rice cultivars from Iri. And uh, most of the Iri varieties, the one in blue, they have higher, they showed higher yield uh, compared to the Nerica varieties that, are, that have been introduced in the country. And uh, uh, with rice, we have developed a new product that is called Oruthima. A, a hybrid of, of pear millet flour and the rice flour. So pear millet flour is what local farmers use, but the rice flour is new. So this new product uh, has both rice and pear millet. So the picture shows rice cultivation by some farmers uh, during Dr. the- Dr. Awalap, I'm sorry. Um, we have run, off the, run out of time. Please, uh, Direct it jump directly into the conclusion. Okay. okay please. Yeah. Uh, from this uh, presentation, we can could see that food security in Namibia is still a distant dream. There is generally low local production of both agronomic and horticultural crops, despite the efforts. Uh, we have also seen the proportion of uh, 59% for cereal imports and the 38% of horticultural imports. The local seed system is, is weak and small, no breeding programs for horticultural crops. There is therefore a need to strengthen and expand both breeding programs and the seed system to increase seed availability and food production. So uh, this is the map of Ogongo. Uh, with uh, some paddy rice and the uh, research field. Ogongo itself consists of uh, 4,000 hectares, and uh, some of those hectares can be dedicated to crop production and seed uh, production. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you very much, uh, Dr. Awala, for your speech. Please give warm applause to Dr. Awala. Our next speaker is Dr. Taryono. And while we wait for the preparation of, for his presentation, let me introduce his background. Dr. Taryono was born in Klaten, Central Java, in 1960. He had his doctor in natural sciences from Humboldt University to Berlin and had his master science 
from Faculty of Science Freie Universität or in English Free University in Brussels, Belgium. He is currently the head of Agrotechnology Innovation Center of uh, UGM and actively engaged in raising the institution profiles, one of which is the founding of Indonesia Africa Center for Sustainable Development Goals of UGM. He was formerly also a vice dean of Faculty of Agriculture of Universitas Gajah Mada and also head of Department of Agronomy in the faculty. He has wide area of training covering tissue culture, mutation and molecular breeding, to simulation and modeling from all over the, all over the world, from Australia to Thailand and also from Europe. Is your presentation already prepared, Mr. Tariano? Yes. So since the presentation are prepared, please, Dr. Tariano, the time is yours for 20 minutes. Thank you, uh, Dr. Panji, who minutes the time of our presentations. So my, my titles of the presentation is the role of plant breeding on food security. It's not about the high yielding varieties, but uh, at the end, we will understand there is a big correlation between plant breeding activities and uh, high yielding varieties. So it is the outline of my presentations. First, I will talk about the plant breeding and crop production system. And then uh, because rice is important for the country, we use rice as the model crop. And then at the end, I will close the talk with the role of UKM in the breeding activities. We know what is plant breeding. So I think all of us know about plant breeding, but I think the, the important one is the challenge of plant breeding that we have discussed already. And the way how to solve the problems. So we, the challenge is about the population growth, climate change, and then also uh, the insect attack and other thing. And from the, uh, from the uh, breeding of uh, point of view, first we have to develop the resistance to disease and pests. And then the second is for the yield stability. And then the third is for nutrient efficiency. And the last one, of course, it can be very, uh, very important, not only for Indonesia, but also for Namibia is about uh, stress tolerance. So it is the breeding programs that we uh, normally learn. First, for breeding program, it is important we have, we should have a good genetic resource. And then from the genetic resource, we conduct a breeding process from the breeding process, and then we will get what we call the breeding products. The breeding products normally for practical uh, breeding product is the varieties or uh, varieties. The varieties have an economic value. This is, I think, is very important to highlight. And then when the varieties is grown by the growers, there will be a social impact of the breeding activities. 
It is the breeding product. Normally, we, we classify it as clone varieties, line varieties, hybrid varieties, population varieties. Varieties as a breeding product will be useful if the seed is available for the growers. I think it is, it is the very important uh, aspect that we have to think about as uh, breeders. So, if we talk about the crop production system, we have at least five input, five important uh, variables. First is the climate, and then the second is the land, and then the third is the crop. This is normally what we learn, but in the, in the developing countries, normally, and then we add about the crop production management, social capital. Varieties represent the crops itself. So the product of the breeding works represent the crops. So it is the crop production factors, uh, fact, uh, factors. So I highlight again land, weather, varieties, crop management, and social capital. But from breeding point of view, varieties is the most important one because 50% in, increase yield is derived from the improved varieties. And then an improved variety is the most economic and least laborious input for crop cultivations. So I took rice as a model because I think for from Indonesian side, rice is a good model to study the role of uh, plant breeding on Indonesia, on Indonesia food production. Why? Because rice is historically food crops. There's already a very long history that people from Indonesia eat rice. And then the second, it is this, uh, the step of food of almost all Indonesian inhabitants. And then in case of Indonesia, rice can be grown in different ecosystem and also in different cropping system. And for food crops, rice uh, spreaded everywhere in terms of the nations. It has uh, the largest uh, cultivation land area. In case of the breeding, rice also is already advancing in the breeding program. So, and the last, we have to know that rice is the first priority target for self-sufficiency. It is the rice growing area of Indonesia. So it's spread everywhere instead of in the east, eastern part side of Indonesia. However, uh, although right now uh, in some part of uh, eastern area, they start already of growing uh, rice. So it is also uh, show us that uh, where the rice normally uh, intensively grown, for instance, uh, here in Java. And we have now is the most is the most uh, proven that they grow normally very intensive rice. For instance, first is, of course, in the south of Sumatra, and then West Java, Central Java, East Java, and the last one is uh, in the Central Sulawesi. So in terms of breeding activities, in case of Indonesia, so the breeding works related to rice is already started a long time ago. It's before, actually, it's before 65. So, so before 65. So it is the it is the number of rice cultivars developed. Uh, by Indonesian breeders and also some from uh, 
the international rice institute and then the one below is the hybrid rice because now hybrid rice is also becoming very important for uh, indonesian growers and uh, if we have a look the improve of productivity of rice so we saw here that at the beginning the productivity of indonesian rice is only around uh, four ton a hectare but at the end i mean in in the in the year of 2010 for instance the new inventory can reach for 10 tons uh, 10 ton per hectare for uh, its planting seasons. So, and the one above it is the productivity of hybrid rice. So, the productivity of hybrid rice is uh, higher than the uh, normal rice variety, or I call it the pure line variety. It is the, we saw here the rice productions is always increased, although the rice harvesting area is, uh, is uh, what do you say, is a steady, is a, a steady increase. So it's increased uh, a little by little. And even in the last five years, there is a trend of uh, declining the the land, uh, the the harvesting area and the rice uh, growing land. So it is the example that in the last of three years the uh, rice uh, uh, planting area is pushed down a little bit. And this is the famous varieties, at least the six famous varieties of uh, Indonesian rice. So we have here the national high yielding varieties, Sihiram, and then Mekonga, and then the IR64, it is from the International uh, Rice Research. And then we have also the local one is the Situ Pakedi. In Pari uh, 32 and in Pari 30 actually uh, developed from the International Rice Research Institute with some uh, modifications. So I mentioned already that the the rice product uh, rice production is uh, the Indonesian rice production is always increased, although the harvesting area is uh, only very small increase in terms of the uh, area. And it is the national rice production and con uh, consumption. This is re uh, related to the self uh, rice self-sufficiency or food self-sufficiency. So there is a, what do you say, there is a, variability, there is a difference uh, from year to year. Yeah. So from the examples of rice, in case of Indonesia, we learned that breeding activities are related to sustainable food productions. So if the breeding activities are strong, mean the, the probability of increasing national food production will also increase. Breeding activities should be intensified if we want to uh, sustain our uh, food crop productions. Therefore, we need to train more practical breeders. It is not necessary uh, by, by what we say, by doing uh, master or PhD, but we need uh, competence persons who work for 
uh, breeders. This is uh, what what is the UGM? How is the UGM? So UGM is ready for human resource development. We have some uh, we have some uh, what do you say uh, subjects offers from different faculties. For instance, from faculties of agriculture. Dr. Panji come, comes from the Faculty of Agriculture in the uh, major of plant breeding, and then from the Faculty of Forestry. I think it is also very important. And then from the Faculty of Biology, Faculty of Animal Husbandry, and then Faculty of Veterinary and Medicine. And then UKM also, we have a good support in research through the research focuses and facilities. So we, uh, we have team tank, we have uh, field station, and we have uh, integrated laboratory. At the end, we have, uh, we have also ship for farmers as a community services. So this is the UKM field tank that uh, spread out in different area, for instance, uh, tea. Uh, we have in the Patilaran tree, uh, tree plantations, and then we have also cocoa uh, collections in Sekayung. Uh, we have tea and cocoa uh, collection in, uh, in San Mikalo. It's in the, in, in, uh, there are in different areas around the, I mean, uh, around the province. And then we have also a uh, seed tank, so in Piat, in Kali uh, we collect aubergine, cucumber, green bean, hot chili pepper, rice, maize, peas, soybean, tomato, and jack long bean. We utilize for collection and some breeding works. And then Faculty of Agriculture, so we have also, we collect also uh, rice, maize, peas, tomato, soybean, and garlic, also for collection and breeding birds. And then at the Faculty of Biology, we collect black rice and then maize and also melon for collection and breeding birds. Yes. So, this is the rice association that we have in the university. So it increased always by uh, uh, month, two months, I call it. At the end, uh, we have now around 500 associations. Some of them we uh, characterize and evaluate already. So we know the characteristic of uh, at least 40% of our assessments. This is the field station facilities in, uh, especially in uh, Agro Technology Innovation Center. So we have a uh, quite a lot of uh, screen house, and then we have also a uh, green house, and then we have a uh, cold storage with the with very big uh, capacity. So we can. Uh, store, I think around nine uh, tons seeds. So it's quite a big uh, capacity of uh, seed storage. And then the university also manages the integrated research and, and testing laboratory. There we can conduct some interesting research, of course, related to. Uh, molecular genetics and then uh, transcriptomics and other things. So it is the research focus related to Ac Acro Technology Innovation Center. So we have a uh, research focus on jab long pin related to risobium responsive and drought tolerance. And then chili paper is about Rastonia res resistant. Eggplants is also Rastonia and nematode resistant. Wing pin, we try to develop determine uh, wing pin, and then we have the green pin, 
try to develop drought tolerance, high yielding varieties, and then check bin. We try to develop determinate high yielding varieties. And then at the end, we have also, we, we work also on rice. So uh, together with the Faculty of Agriculture, we try to develop abiotic stress tolerant high yielding varieties. It is the activities of community service. So the improved seeds from the farmers normally, and then we send back to the communities by some uh, activities. For instance, here is the through the community service uh, services, and then to women's activities, and then the last one, of course, is through the jobs. Uh, I open the conclusions because I think uh, we know already that plant breeding is very important to support the food security to uh, to to increase the national crop productions. I think this is the end of my presentations. Now the times I will give back to. Uh, Mas Panji Sakti Basunanda. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Taryono, for your speech. Please give warm applause to Dr. Taryono for his speech. Now, to conclude the presentation session, I'll I would like to introduce Insignior Asep Harpenas as our next and last presenter. Mr. Harpenas is the Director of Research and Development of uh, PT East West Seed Indonesia or Iwindo e e and joined the company since 1990. He was born in Subang, West Java in 1965 and he graduated from Bogor Agricultural University now known as IPB University. ASEP, as he dearly called, started his career as a young researcher and until now has developed 30 varieties of chili, pepper, beans, and bitter gourd that have been commercialized and had major contribution to Indonesia horticultural development. ASEP is also a pioneer in the application of CMS technology for varieties of chilies. While other than that, he has delivered a major contribution in creating Pelita as Indonesia chili seed export product. Besides actively contributed in various seminars and symposia, r and at the national and regional venues, he also actively participated in various social activities to empower farmers, increasing access to the education, mostly for farmers and children, and improve welfare community. Mr. Asep Harbanas will give presentation on the role of seed industry on national good seed availability. May I check the presentation? Is it already prepared? Okay, since uh, the presentation all prepared, please, Mr. Asep Harbanas, the time is yours. Thank you, Pak Panji. Selamat sore. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Um, thanks for the opportunity to explain, to share our experience during 30 years of serving agricultural farmers. First of all, I would like to uh, thank Apology Science, uh, our managing directors. Glenn Pardede is not possible to attend this webinar. Science he has also to manage uh, another important stakeholders, uh, seed grower area in East Java. Uh, the committee requests us to uh, present the role of seed industry of national good seed availability. So here I would like to use the experience of a window, 30 years of a window in serving horticulture farmers as an example. 
uh, this is my bio. Uh, first, I would like to start with this uh, wise man, these two wise men, Mr. Groot, Pat Simon Groot, and Mr. Matthew, we, we call him Papi. As a founder of Isfasi Indonesia, together with the late Haji Aji Rustam Effendi. This is the milestone of uh, a window, so established in 1990. Uh, we established headquarters and the substation for our land in Puakata. And in uh, 1995, we able to release the first hybrid eggplant, we call it Mustang or Mustang. And also we established Highland Research Station in Lembang and also Midland Research Station uh, short by from Kuakata, Wanayasa. In 2001, we established Plant Pathology Laboratorium, also Tissue Culture, and we could modernize our R&D building. And 2007, we established headquarter uh, QA and warehouse in East Java and also in Kuakata. And we released the first through Sherrod Seed, what we call Tuk Tuk. The name is Tuk Tuk. And 2016, our seed lab uh, awarded ISTA, International Seed Testing uh, Association Accreditation. And then we also established Biology Molecular Lab and also the integrated the Office One established in Puakata. At the same time, we start up a positive company together with other uh, uh, provider. And also we established sweet corn factory in Kediri. So it is interesting to talk uh, about mines in Nam Namibia, but unfortunately, we work only on sweet corn and glutino sweet corn. And recently, uh, especially in 2018, we support the uh, Agri Agro Technology Innovation Center of uh, UGM to establish National Vegetable Gene Bank in Jakarta. And broadly, we mentioned that uh, in 2019, our one of our staff uh, found protocol for DH in tomato. We have vision that we believe in high quality vegetable seeds and excellent services for farmers' prosperity. So we have three keywords here: high quality vegetable seeds, excellent services, and farmers prosperity. So to relax, to, to implement uh, the vision, to, to reach the vision, we have a uh, mission statement that a window provides high quality to the table. A window helps farmers through excellent services. And a window promotes vegetable consumption. For that, our company, our organization have values versus farmer best friend. So a window are farmers, farmers best friend. A window are happy and debtful employee. A window are strive for excellence. Here I would like to uh, mention to all of you that we are integrated seed company. So we, uh, we are dealing with uh, uh, customer preferences. And then we uh, follow by gen plasma collection in terms to fulfill the customer preference, then reading process. Then we submit uh, several candidate tests in multi location. And then if we able to select the best candidate, we will introduce to farmers. Of course, we have to uh, register via uh, uh, priority release uh, office. And then finally, uh, 
uh, introduced to the market. So we are integrated chief company from uh, market and back to the market. This is our profile. We are supported by 10, by 1,000 national employees, equipped by advanced by technology tools, partnered with 17,000 seed growers, 70,000 pollinator workers, either in Java or Lampung. We produce more than uh, 1,500 high quality seeds of varieties. We focus to produce national seeds, national need of vegetable seeds. Our seed used by around 7 million vegetable farmers. Talking about the food security, why seed is the key? Because based on World Mega Trend, that is world population estimated in 2045 will be at so many numbers, especially in Indonesia or focus in Indonesia, our population estimated will be reach uh, around 300 more million of people. So we have to think how to feed them. In other side, national seed availability is only 50% of total need. So there is a big turmoil. Horticulture industry need 15,000 ton seeds a year. And as we know all that uh, the seed uh, cost for this agriculture or for the horticulture uh, cropping system only three to five percent of the total vegetable production. But plays the most important role in overall vegetable production. So talking in total is uh, uh, managing two trillions value of vegetable seed business comparing to the cost for production needs 40 trillion and this will resulting price at trader level at farmers to trader 60 trillion more or less and at retail price sorry uh, around 1200 trillion. 2021, a window have uh, 100 varieties listed in the commercial list. As you can see, as an example, cucumber, shallot, shallot from TSS to shallot chip. Uh, bird pepper or chili paddy, curl pepper, French bean, eggplant, yard long bean. Unfortunately, we do not work on poppy breeding, but we are frequently use poppy so for source of resistance in our breeding program. The next is lupa, is the uh, rigid lupa, pumpkin. Cabbage, peppers, corn, also good to use corn. The, the pink color is the left, uh, low left uh, side. Also, butternut, pumpkin, bitter wood, melon, uh, tomato, watermelon, and cauliflower flowers. So, science, uh, our vision is uh, to promote farmers' prosperity. Probably here we uh, I present the success story of some of our young farmers' friends. For example, Ayudu Jana, watermelon farmers from Medan, Didin from West Java, Taufik is Java, Dadan from West Java, and others. Uh, actually, these slides can be uh, called as conclusion. Um, I would like to use the slides 
to present the uh, closing statement that our, I believe, is seat Indonesia has contribution to stimulate our agriculture, our seed industry by establishing a seed company 30 years ago. Now, uh, those are several local seed company, as you can see in the slides. This is just an example, seven uh, local seed company, but uh, I would mention as Benindo Seed Producer Association, members for 2021 have 72 members, including local, national, private companies, government, and multinational. Besides that, I will know also uh, contributed in price improvement, where at the time, this variety improvement also improved the variety quality level of uh, agriculture in, in Indonesia. For instance, I have an example. Phytophthora uh, capsicera cistan, which is the janitor, is outside. A window able to interpret the Phytophthora capsicera to our variety. Then later on, the young breeders can uh, direct or indirectly use the characters from our variety also to bring another good variety. And then the next slide, uh, only showing that uh, uh, farmers has an uh, important role. This is during pandemic uh, time, which now is also uh, still happen, that they have us a lot. They uh, what they write in the in the papers is the please stay please you stay at home. Uh, don't worry, we work for you preparing uh, food. So this is the farmers from I think North Sumatra, from Java, and so on. And a window also, as I mentioned before. Uh, success to have uh, accreditation from ITA, also quality management system. And then we, all, we are also actively collaborate with universities, other companies, institute here with uh, PIAT, it's Anglo Technology Innovation Center, and also high school. In, uh, this one is uh, another uh, contribution to the municipal government that a window thinking also about the young, about the urban people. So a window trying to have urban farming center. This is uh, uh, almost uh, destination at least in Wakasa. Uh, the ladies is the Ibu Bupati. We create Sipindo application to have uh, farmers and traders. We also create an agriculture hub for our customer, for our farmers. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, pa, uh, Asep, uh, for your speech. Uh, please give warm applause to Pak Asep Harpenas. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have concluded our four uh, speakers. And now we enter the discussion session for 15 minutes. Or yes, we have 40 minutes, I think. Um, 
we already have questions and comments actually in the chat room. Uh, let me sort uh, them first. Uh, there is question from Simon Tamwana and also from Mr. Ndiapo Nikanor. Um, first, I would like to read uh, the questions from Mr. Simon Tamwana. I think uh, it's already answered also actually in the chat room, but I think I will uh, give uh, the speakers um, opportunity to answer uh, verbally. Uh, the question from uh, Simon Tamwana is directed to, although it's written uh, to Mr. Awala, however, uh, this question have was written uh, be before Mr. Awala have uh, he had his presentation. So I think it was directed to Professor um, uh, Birich, Roda Birich. Yeah. Uh, there are uh, two questions. The first one is, do you think research on seed multiplication can improve sustainable development in African countries? And the second question, this is written to Professor Roda already, do you think the joint research between Indonesia and Namibia can improve public diplomacy between the two countries? Do you think the joint research on seed between Indonesia and Namibia can improve public or gastronomic diplomacy between the two countries? And Professor Birech already uh, given her answer. However, I would like to give time to Professor Birech to answer this uh, orally. Please, Professor Bir uh, Ronda. Yes. Uh, uh, it is true that collaboration between Namibia and Indonesia is going to share knowledge and expertise across the board. And it should be able, we can even share with a good uh, memorandum of understanding, we can even share research material. And what has been developed for Indonesia can be tried here in Namibia. And then we should be able to get faster where we are going. That is more seeds being adopted for farmers and better food security for our two countries. So we encourage collaboration. Namibia is open to collaboration. And collaboration can be in different forms. It can start from jump lesson, it can be technology sharing, it can be the breeders. Indonesian professor can join Namibia for three months and we can help each other to set up our biotech lab, for example, uh, to improve our tissue culture protocols, field seed production, and collaboration can even go into ICT. I see there is a, a lot of inclusion of digital technologies, even in extension services. So Namibia would really benefit from sharing that or obtaining such information from a collaboration with Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Oda. Uh, there's a second question from Mr. Ndiapo Nikanor. Uh, a question to Professor Oda. Although at its infant stage in terms of testing, the current sites are all in rural areas. However, more than 50% 50, 50 of the Namibian population now resides in urban areas. What are, the, what are the possibilities of extending the sites for suitable seats to urban areas? Uh, okay. Of course, uh, Professor Birich already answered this question, Mr. Ndiapu. However, Perhaps uh, Professor Oda would, act, would like to add some comments on this? Yeah, okay. The current testing had to take place in a research station for control of data collection. We could not just take any site like a, a, a neighbor of a farmer in town. We needed to go first to a research station so that we get very sensitive data but when we go to the next level, we will go now to the farmer's fields to try those varieties which we have selected at the research level. And the farmer's fields will be any farmer, even in a very urban environment, 
we can be able to test those varieties in the, in the upper areas. And uh, as I say also in my message, which I replied to Professor Nicanor, we need to develop upper agriculture because a good population of the Namibian people are living in towns and most of those towns have community gardens. And they also require our services in terms of seeds input, technology, and the uh, food processing and uh, a value chain of the food system in general. So a program or variety suitable for urban farming, especially vegetables would really, really do well. So that would be the next level of development that is urban agriculture. Thank you very much, Professor Roda. Uh, there is a question from Mr. Abdurrahman Mana. He is asking um, email address to both presenters from Namibia. Uh, Mr. Abdurrahman, you may, uh, I think you may contact the committee for the emails of the speakers, not only from, the, from Namibia, but also, uh, also as well as from Indonesia also. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And this is a question again from Zishan Hamid Malik. Uh, uh, but I think um, uh, Mr. Zishan Malik uh, did not mention to whom the question are addressed is addressed. So perhaps Mr. Zishan Hamid Malik would like to uh, ask the question by yourself orally, please. Mr. Zishan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, it's Zishan uh, Hamid Malik. Yes. Uh, uh, please uh, uh, direct your question to whom this question is addressed. Um, uh, my question is general. I am not just uh, hmm, asking someone special, but my question is general. Like, is there what is the scope and implementation of vertical farming techniques in urban areas? Any research? Over uh, this issue, <clears throat> either in uh, Indonesia or in uh, Africa, relating to the uh, implementation of vertical farming. So my question basically revolves around it. Okay, is, is that thank so? Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Zishan. Okay. So perhaps uh, any of uh, four uh, presenters would like to uh, answer uh, the question from Mr. Zishan because he's not. Um, 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 ex uh, exclusively as for some person of some uh, one presenter only. Uh, Ariono, could, you, could you repeat the question, please? Uh, it's written already, uh, Professor Oda. Uh, okay. Mr. Zishan uh, asked ask about uh, the status of vertical farming techniques for urban areas. Uh, he asked okay. also. Is there any research on it in Namibia as well as in Indonesia? I can just say uh, briefly and then my colleague will answer also and then we we'll leave it to the Indonesian team to answer. Yes. Uh, urban agriculture, particle farming that is greenhouse technology that is moving up is actually the current technology that could be used in urban areas where the land size is not sufficient. And it should be able to recycle water and to be able to recycle nutrients and get the harvest that's appropriate. Now, Namibia currently does not have a particle farming, but we have some very good greenhouse technologies that is taking place even in the desert. We have a farm called Shalom Farm that is able to produce with desalinated water, bohol water, and it recycles water and is able to produce good vegetables in terms of quality reduced uh, pesticide application and being able to reach the farmers in those urban regions. So my colleague can add uh, something about uh, practical farming existence in Namibia. We are using one laptop. Hey, Banji. Yes, please. Uh, 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 thank you. Okay. Well, please, Dr. Awala. We, we have so many people that are living in towns, uh, and they, a number of them, have started practicing backyard gardening. However, there is not 
scientific support yet. So with uh, this collaboration, especially in terms of seed development, a, a good varieties could be found that can perform well under intensive production, especially vegetables and also um, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, both tree production and the horticultural tree production and also vegetables. Uh, I think that that is what I can say at the moment. So it is, it is doable, it can be done uh, through water conservation. Water can be acquired from rooftop during rainy, rainy season and the, the preserved uh, so that it can be used for irrigation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Awala. Yes, so, Mrs. Uh, Malik. So I would like to tell you that uh, we work together with the local government, especially in Yogyakarta, uh, to, uh, to develop the urban farming system, good, to uh, vertical farming, and also uh, what, we, what we call it a simple, uh, simple screen house. And, and, and uh, uh, right now in our institute, we try to develop uh, planting materials for urban farming uh, because we learn from our collaborations with the local government. Uh, planting media is uh, to be one uh, aspect that should be, what do you say, that should be uh, Uh, that should be considered uh, and uh, really uh, for the planting materials, we collaborate together with the Evindo because normally in urban farming, we grow uh, horticulture crops, especially the vegetable one. So, we work together with uh, Evindo because Evindo also interested in uh, urban farming, such as uh, one, two slides that uh, we saw already. Uh, it is uh, hosted by our colleague, uh, Pak Asep. Yeah, so we, we, uh, we work quite intensive in the center with, uh, related to uh, urban farming, especially also uh, in the vertical and uh, small greenhouse system. I think it is the answer, pa Panji. Okay. okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Taryono. Uh, perhaps uh, Pak Asep would like to add something about you, vertical Panji. farming. Uh, perhaps yeah. you have already experiences also on this. Uh, Unfortunately not. Crops, yes. <laughs> yeah, a window yeah. Uh, do not. Uh, do uh, certain research about that. We are focusing on seed usage, seed use for urban uh, people. But I believe uh, some of the customer using the simple hydroponic in vertical position. Yes. Uh, maybe that's the only answer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Zushan, do you have any comments on the answers? No, uh, no, 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 I don't is have any. Okay, case, this is enough. Uh, is okay, clear, thank, is enough. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, next question is uh, from uh, Ibu Larin Tika Febrianti. But before this, I would like to ask uh, participants, please write your questions. Uh, uh, we have still a lot of time uh, for discussion. Uh, so um, I think uh, it will be uh, valuable to us that uh, the, the discussion uh, will give us many information for our future um, uh, discussion and also perhaps business relations in the, in the, in the future. 
So the question from Larin, Ibu Larin Tika Febrianti is addressed to Pak Asep or Mr. Asep. Um, so many commodities that breeding and develop that has been bred and developed by a window, which is the priorities commodities and which one have a high economic values in seed business. Thank you very much. So please, Pak Asep. Thank answer. you, uh, Dr. Panji. Yes. Uh, yes, we are working on so many crops, but maybe to give you a picture about our uh, job situation, that we grouping the crop to become four departments, tomat and little vegetables, peppers, and then cucurbit, and then cucurbit and corn, and the horse department is handling beans, rasika, shavak. And talking about the cells, we have three strategic crops, cucumber, peppers, and tomatoes. So we have high focus on tomatoes, peppers, and cucumber. And plus now, we add with sweet corn. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Asep. Um, and Ibu Larin, uh, we have also answered from Professor Roda. You may please uh, check the chat uh, room uh, because there is answers from um, uh, Professor Roda regarding to the um, adaptability of certain horticultural crops in Namibia. And the next question is from Mr. Andy Wahyono. Uh, Mr. Arandi asked uh, to Mr. Awala, uh, how about chance development of horticulture or vegetable crops such as chili, tomato, eggplant, etc., at Namibia and other African countries? Well, perhaps this is the, the answers that provided by Professor uh, Roda. Okay. So. Perhaps uh, Professor Awal, uh, Dr. Awala would like to add some comments on this. Uh, well, it is it's possible, but this uh, will be dictated by the market. Uh, for Chile, because now in Namibia, in Africa, we are talking about food security which is the major concern. Uh, however, uh, those, uh, for example, chili, the spices and so on, uh, they can also be developed for, for, for commercial purposes, even for export. Uh, the, the weather in Africa, is, uh, or in Namibia in particular, is, is, is conducive for production of, the, of most of the crops. Only that the water is a limiting factor. So maybe why we are talking, we are discussing about vegetable production, we also need to bring in engineering, uh, engineering part. You know, when you are talking about water harvesting, uh, water conservation, because we yeah. need some structures for, for water storage. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Andy. Maybe I can add uh, something related to Pak Andy. Yes, please, Mr. Karim. Uh, uh, Pak Andy, so actually, uh, UNAM and UGM start to collaborate in such uh, in such commodities. Yeah, so. Uh, Dr. Awala mentioned that in Ukungu campus in the north, so uh, they manage a big size of area. So it's around 4,000 hectares. We can imagine 4,000 hectares. There is a ranch inside of the campus and the condition is very flat. And uh, our, our discussion into 19 actually we we will collaborate together to 
develop Okongo campus as the research center. So it's, it's a center of excellence for such kind of work related to breeding program and then seed production system and everything, especially also for hearty, uh, horticulture crops such as vegetables and seasonal uh, food. Of course, uh, food crops such as uh, maize and uh, mango uh, can be for uh, very important commodities, but uh, food crop, food crops actually can be uh, also horticultural crops. It is what I mentioned. So if we like to work together, so please communicate with us in UGM and then we, we, we try and then to uh, communicate with Okungo campus, especially to uh, Professor uh, Bire and also Dr. Awal. I think it is the additional information that I, I like to uh, post in this uh, good uh, time of uh, webinar. Thank you, Pak Panji. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Taryono. So it is about uh, market demands <laughs> and also opportunities in Namibia as well as in Indonesia also. Um, so I think until now we don't have any more uh, questions. Perhaps I would like to now to open the open questions uh, will be delivered orally uh, from the participants perhaps. Uh, if there's any, then uh, please uh, take your uh, open your video and also mic and directly ask the questions to uh, presenters. Oh, there is a question uh, written in chat room from, Profes, uh, from Ibu Sumarmi from UNISRI. Uh, Ibu Sumarmi, would, would you like to uh, deliver your question uh, directly to the presenters? Instead of uh, I, I read your question. Thank you. I yes, want please, Ibu Sumarmi. I want to ask to Professor Roda and Dr. Awala. Your country needs a lot of potatoes. What's the menu or uh, like uh, food from for the people every day? It's enough. It's that my questions. Uh, thank you, Busumarmi. So yeah. please, uh, Professor Oda and uh, Dr. Awala, you may answer thank the question. Thank you for your question. I would like them to answer. Uh, the eating habits are different uh, uh, for the different uh, <coughs> communities. The people out of the population, are depending on maize and pearl millet as a staple food. While half of the population mainly eat uh, bread derived food as well as potatoes. And you could see in one year we import 20,000 tons of potatoes. That tells you potatoes is in the, the meal of almost every family. And these days there is what you call chips, the potatoes slices, which are eaten as snacks by all the young people in schools during break time. So potato is really, really very popular because it has many forms of, you can eat as much potato, you can eat in different forms. Yeah, so it's popular. In addition, the presenter, the Professor Tariano had said, you would wish to have a Gongo campus at the Center of Excellence for Seed Research and Seed Multiplication. So for both cereals and vegetables and perhaps root crops, you are welcome and Namibia is ready for that collaboration. Thanks. Dr. Awala, you, you can ask something. Thank you, Professor Oda. I, I would like to add some information about potato. Uh, I visited uh, potato 
located area in the northern part of Namibia. Uh, they grew, and the, the company, normally they grew potato in quite large size of land, especially for, I think, for, for the, uh, what do you say, for the big market and even also in the small market. So the possibility, of course, is open for us, not only potato, but even also sweet potato. Yeah, not only potato, but even sweet potato, because uh, in the north, we, uh, I think we can, we can grow a lot of, uh, what do you say, a lot of uh, different kinds of uh, food crop, yeah. not in the south, because in the south is very dry, but in the north, uh, although the rainfall is low, but uh, like uh, Dr. Awala mentioned, there is uh, there are uh, a lot of big rivers. They they have the water coming from Angola and Jambi. Uh, uh, so yeah. So thank you. So, the the is in the north. That's yes. what I have to add uh, from the from Professor. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Taryono. Uh, Dr. Awala, uh, before you answer the question that was delivered earlier, uh, there is a question also from uh, Ms. Yusefina Namonong Henda Abed. Um, uh, she has a question to you. Uh, is there any training program in Namibia that will help farmers to understand the importance of using improved varieties in order to increase food production in Namibia. Uh, so perhaps you may answer also uh, both questions. Thank you, Dr. Awar. Uh, I said thank you to, thank you for the question. Uh, for in terms of uh, training, so far there is no uh, formal programs to, increase or to improve the uptake of uh, improved, improved seeds. Uh, however, we at the University of Namibia, we are planning to introduce short of course, training programs and uh, information on seeds, improved seeds. This is, this is one of them. Uh, and also general cultivation of both um, agronomic and the horticultural crops. Uh, but I should say that for now, th there are no training activities targeting uh, farmers to uptake, uh, to, to use improved seeds. Only in uh, specific cases, for example, uh, when we are uh, promoting rice cultivation, then we just talk about rice. Uh, we do not talk about uh, using improved seed of maize or, or pay millet. So, so however, that, that is a very important question, uh, uh, but it has to be linked to the availability of seed or accessibility of seed. So when we start uh, uh, disseminating such information, we also have to make sure that uh, such seed is available. I think that that is very important. Uh, to the question from Dr. Tariano, there are a number of farmers that cultivate root crops, uh, including sweet potato, and the chuba crop, uh, potato itself, and the also cassava. There are those farmers that are trying. However, again, uh, there is a problem when it comes to, to acquisition of seeds. Uh, sometimes they order seeds from South Africa, for example, baby potato, and uh, this might uh, arrive late 
So the, the, the potato is a, it's a cool season crop. It requires winter temperature. So the, when they go through the border, so it, it becomes a problem. It, it will take time. And when they arrive here, it is already some. So it, so it doesn't save the, the papers anymore. So you find that the local production is, is not uh, uh, improving that much because of those problems. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Awala. Um, there is a, an, another question here from uh, Alushe Hitula. Yeah. Good day, panelists. I would like to know what is Indonesia's food security situation? How has the seed research and development program assisted in securing food security in Indonesia? So perhaps this is a question that addressed to Dr. Tarayono and also uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Asep would like also to answer the quest this question. So please, Dr. Ariano, Tariano first. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Panji. So I would like to inform of, about the food security conditions in Indonesia. So actually the, the supply, the total food, yeah, we call it the total food uh, supply is enough. Yeah, is enough. Yeah, is enough. But but the Indonesian inhabitants and the population groups, especially the population groups, is quite high. Means the food security we see up and down. Every year, we have different story about the food security. So, uh, the, reason, uh, the second uh, reasons that uh, why the food security, something like that is normally food security related to, uh, to the uh, availability of rice only. So diversifications, source of food is becoming very important for us. So we mentioned that Indonesian people eat three times a day of rice. When we eat rice, so we eat more rice than the other things. is is different from the Namibian. I know that Namibian people, they eat more uh, meat than, than other source of food. And then uh, I think the government, they place a very important role in trying to increase always the uh, national crop productions. So not only from the public research sector, but also the involvement of private uh, seed sectors like uh, Evindu. And I think uh, there are so many uh, private uh, seed industry involved in the how to uh, set uh, uh, of Indonesia. So we have quite strong research, uh, quite strong research both in the public sector and also in the uh, private sector. I think this is uh, my response to uh, the question of uh, question from Mrs. Mrs. Yeah. Uh, is this my, my, uh, okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Pak Taryono. Uh, uh, yes, perhaps uh, Pak pa Asep would like to add something from um, private sector point of view. <laughs> thank you. Panji, yeah. I would only say, uh, based on the slides I presented uh, before, that yes. uh, we have a big homework. Uh, the need of our uh, the, the fulfill of our seed need is only 50%, but that's only for agriculture. 
not talking about the staple food sheet and so on. Uh, so I only say generally, uh, I think, uh, okay, especially when uh, the question is about seed research and development program. I think Indonesia is quite good, although uh, maybe the distribution problem more. For instance, our stunting uh, against stunting program we are still have to work harder to against that uh, challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Asep. So it's about quality of the food products and also the amount uh, that was eaten per day <laughs> of foods. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, so we don't still don't have uh, questions written in chat rooms, perhaps, uh, there, there are participants who would like to deliver their question directly. Okay, there's a question here, written here in chat room uh, from Mr. Umar Bashir. Perhaps uh, Mr. Umar Bashir would like to present uh, your, uh, or deliver your question directly to the uh, speakers or the, to, the, to whom uh, the question would be addressed, please. Please, Mr. Umar Bashir, or or do you would like do you uh, do you prefer that I read your question? Okay, then I will read your question. Uh, what is about research for quality improvement in Indonesia? Um, uh, Dr. Taryono, perhaps would like to comment on this, uh, although the question is perhaps uh, need to yes. be uh, interpreted more. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, oh, in rice production. Okay, so this is for Dr. Taryono, I think. Yeah, yes. thanks a lot, uh, yeah. Pak Basil. So if we, if we learn about the history of how uh, Indonesian improve the rice varieties, yeah, from 60, I think around 65 to uh, to uh, to 2021. 20, yeah. At the beginning, yeah, at the beginning, uh, we consider only the total rice productions. But and then I think start from uh, I think around 90s, around 90s, and then we move from the quantities and also consider the qualities because i think there are different uh, what do you say uh, different definitions of the qualities in terms of rice for indonesian inhabitants yeah so there are different uh, there are different characteristic of uh, rice for reason when when the rice when the rice can uh, varieties introduced from the international rice institute normally they are quite uh, what do you say they are quite round yeah they are quite round yeah but when the rice uh, varieties released by uh, the indonesian research institution Normally, it is the what you say a kind of gluten pipes. I mean, uh, they will when when we cook, it is they will produce a, what what we call it a smooth a smooth uh, rice qualities. This is an example of how we we improve the quality of rice. Uh, I think in the last of ten years, we start also to develop some jasmine rice, for instance, because uh, what is it? Typically, the Indonesian people who live in Java Island they prefer to consume the uh, what do you say? Play, uh, jasmine rice, for instance. So the process of improving uh, variety of rice, it's it's considering the uh, community pre uh, preferences. So 
Of course, it can be very different. It can be uh, very different when we uh, uh, when we uh, work with the vegetable or or fruit uh, commodities. This is what I like to comment about the progress of rice in Indonesia. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Taryono. Uh, any more question? Would like to be delivered uh, directly. If not, uh, then I think we already reached to our uh, end part of this discussion session. And so I would like uh, uh, to stop the discussion session here. And uh, before uh, I deliver this, uh, this stage to our Master of Ceremony, uh, let me conclude the, uh, what we have uh, here, what we have heard and also discussed uh, during our uh, last session. Uh, Namibia and Indonesia as developing countries face the same problems, namely limited achievement of technologies related to food crop production. As such, uh, uh, quality and quantity of seeds, use of suboptimal levels of technology and limited ability to control uh, environment challenges. And there are differences in environments between both countries and also cultural background. Uh, this uh, impacts on the type of crop plants uh, priorities uh, planted by uh, both countries. However, the differences can become strength uh, when both parties can share their potentiality and experiences. For example, uh, Namibia mainly focused, uh, focused on drought tolerant crop plants, while Indonesia, as exemplified by the presenters, has more experience in field and horticultural crops that may in the future fit uh, to wet area of Namibia. And uh, vice versa, perhaps Indonesia can also benefit from the uh, condition in Namibia and also the crop types, crop, a type of crops that was planted there because now in Indonesia, there's a trend that uh, uh, people would like to have alternative uh, energy source uh, not just from rice, but also from wide area of um, um, uh, energy crop plants. Uh, and um, I, hear, I, I read that um, millets, for instance, can be uh, mixed with rice uh, to make uh, new variants of um, uh, food supply in Indonesia. And also not to forget about feed industry that also uh, is developing uh, fast in Indonesia also. So we have uh, that information provided by the presenters may serve as baselines for future discussions and become successful stories and histories in the so-called South-South cooperation. I, Panjisakti Basunanda, thank all the presenters and also participants in this webinar. I return the stage to our Master of Ceremony Thank you so much, Mr. Panji from Faculty of Agriculture, UGM. Once again, everyone, give applause for our today's great speaker, Professor Roda Biresh and Dr. Simon Awala from UNAP, and also Mr. Tarayono and Mr. Asep Harpanas. Ladies and gentlemen, to conclude the webinar session for today, we would like to invite Professor Dr. Fred Nart Gideon from University of Namibia to formally give closing remarks. Um, thank you very much, Director of Proceeding. Uh, let me take this uh, opportunity really to sincerely thank you for directing this. Um, the Director of or the moderator of the webinar. Um, my name is Gideon, as it has been actually mentioned. Allow me to recognize the presence of the rector of the University of Gajamada, Professor Panutu Munyono. 
Allow me also to recognize our Vice Chancellor, Vice Chancellor of the University of Namibia, Professor Kenneth Kami Matengu, Professor Ikadewi Anna, my friend, Vice Rector for Research and Community Engagement. Good morning. Professor Triano Triano, our chairperson of the webinar organizing committee, and also the chairperson of UGM UNAM Joint Committee for the Edo Africa Center. Distinguished webinar keynote speakers, distinguished academic from both UGM and UNAM participating in this webinar. Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good, good morning. I think we are still in the morning. Uh, what time is it in Indonesia? 5 p.m. Almost 5 p.m. Good afternoon, good afternoon Professor Tudian. Good, after, good morning and good afternoon, you know, colleagues. <laughs> I think I need to indicate that. So I would like to believe that you all agree with me that this webinar has been a very informative and forms a strong foundation for UNAM, working very closely with our stakeholders in Namibia, such as the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform, and the Agronomic Board of Namibia. And to strengthen the current initiatives of meeting the country improved seed productions and distribution. As it has been pointed out by all the speakers, without an efficient and effective seed improvement systems in Namibia and Africa in general, we will continue to be faced with food security challenges confronting us as a nation and as a continent. As the, our, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Kenneth Matengu has already mentioned during the opening session, and I reiterate that, UNAM is very excited to have its envisaged seed improvement and production center at Ogongo campus become realized as soon as possible with the support of our collaborating partner institutions, the University of Gajamadi. Of course, as I have already stated above, UNAM will only be able to achieve this if it works closely with the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform, and other national and international development partners. Considering that from UNAM side, my office is responsible for overseeing the successful establishment of the proposed Indonesia Africa Center for the UN Sustainable Development Goals, working very closely with my UGM counterpart, the Vice Rector, Professor Ikadeu Anna. Let me take this opportunity to express our sincere thanks and appreciation to both the UHM, U, UGM Rector, Professor Panut Munyono, and the UNAM Vice Chancellor, Professor Kenneth Matengu, for having set aside part of their variable time to participate in this inaugural webinar. Their presence is not only encouraging, but also shows their commitment to make sure that the Indo-Africa Center become a reality. Professor Ikaanna and myself would like to assure both the Rector and the Vice Chancellor that we will work very hard with the assistance of the two respective institutional local subcommittees to ensure that this great vision is achieved, of course, with the support of our respective governments and development partners. I also wish to thank the webinar organizing committee chaired by Professor Triano, who is also the chairperson of the joint UNAM UGM committee for the establishment of the Indonesia Africa Center for Sustainable Development Goals. I wish also to take this opportunity to thank the four speakers from Namibia and also Indonesia for their excellent and inspiring presentations. The moderator of the webinar, Dr. Basnada, has also done an excellent job and we wish to thank him too. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Moderator. Finally, let me thank all the participants who joined this important webinar. 
as it was mentioned earlier, this webinar is the first of a number of webinars which will be organized jointly between UGM and UNAM for the next few months, with the second one expected to take place in November, December 2021. We hope that you will be able to join the other webinars as well and effectively contribute to the discussions. And I hope you have also learned something from this webinar and it has also set some sin. So on that note, I sincerely would like also to thank each and everyone, you know, from my, from my side and wish you either a good morning or a good afternoon. I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Fretner from UNAM. As Professor Fretner said, we do hope by joining this webinar, we can enhance our understanding about food security between countries, Indonesia and Namibia. In the future, this agenda can increase the chances of doing some research and also collaborations. Ladies and gentlemen, before we close this today's webinar, I would like to give you some information. First, for all participants, participants can download participant certificates on Google Drive. The Google Drive link will be informed via WhatsApp or email. The second one is, we would like to inform you that the next series of this webinar will be held in November 2021 with the topic Small Medium Enterprise. In December 2021, you can also join the other series about Indonesia-Africa trade. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of webinar Indonesia-Africa Center of Universitas Gajah Mada, good seed quality of high yielding varieties for food security. My name is Yopi Darmawan. Thank you so much for joining us and we wish you a very good afternoon and evening. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Thank you everyone. Terima kasih, terima kasih Pak Tor. Atur nuhun. Thank you. Terima kasih Pak Asep juga. Mohon maaf kalau berkenan. Terima kasih. Amin Pak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining with us. Okay, okay. Thanks ever so much. Universitas Gajah Mada or UGM is a public university renowned as the People's University which strives for and puts forward the interests of the citizens and nation of Indonesia. As a higher education institution that has long been recognized by the society, we are proud of our timeless and tireless dedication to the nation. By cultivating, implementing, and leveraging education, research, and community services which constitute the salient objectives of Indonesian higher education, or Tridharma, we remain committed to incessantly promoting the values of Pancasila. We exert the utmost effort to protect Indonesia's sovereignty in accordance with Pancasila ideology and the 1945 constitution. As a world-class university, UGM is devoted to the interests of the nation and humanity. We conduct research, provide education, and deliver community services by enhancing knowledge that benefits the community, the nation, and the world. We have been learning from one another and get stronger together since we believe that knowledge is not useful unless it is shared with others. The learning process will never cease developing. At UGM, we learn by continuously exploring sciences, learning from history, observing the present, and researching for the future. We always work hard and never give up. The learning and research processes at UGM continue to run together and explore state-of-the-art innovations. To create a convenient, environmentally friendly, and pollution-free green campus, UGM has built a wisdom park that substantiates the teaching and learning process. The park per se is open to the public. 
NGM has also developed drinking water facilities throughout the campus, provided by drinking water supporting unit. This system is harnessed by the entire academic community of UGM. As the manifestation of its teaching endeavor, UGM operates various field laboratories for educational and research purposes. Furthermore, UGM has established and run a science techno park as an embodiment of its capability of inventing and commercializing a myriad of innovative health products, ranging from medical devices, herbal medicines, and healthy food. There are now more than 118,000 cases in 114 countries and 4,291 people have lost their lives. 2020 has been a tough year for anyone and it is no exception for UGM. Campus activities are abruptly halted, student activities on campus are annulled and everyone is forced to work, worship and study from home. Lecturers have no choice but to learn how to teach effectively using the Information and Communication Technology or ICT. Learning and research on technology are strongly supported at UGM and in fact, we have conducted various cutting-edge technological research. Community Service or KKN is one of the most important courses to complete the study program which will be undergone by University of Gajah Mada or UGM in 2020 while adapting online courses system. Supported by the Ministry of Education, UGM will continue its service within the society across Indonesia during the pandemic issue. Lecturers and researchers at UGM continue carrying out basic and applied research in many realms, 